The Real Investment Show. And welcome back to the show this morning. Early morning here as uh, we don't even, you know, just getting around to getting breakfast. But uh, we have viewers sitting in Germany right now having lunch. So welcome to the show. We appreciate you watching. Um, so just for the break, um, you know, talking about, you know, this idea about psychology and investing in markets and, and you know, the point that we're trying to make here. And again, it doesn't matter what your belief is. And, and again, as Mike was talking about, you know, yesterday, he's making fun of the fun of, you know, Bitcoin by saying, you know, USD dollars doesn't, you know, uh, devalue by 30 percent. Uh, just fair and full disclosure, I own both Ethereum and Bitcoin. Um, and I bought a little bit more yesterday on the dip. And I, I have no, I have no, look, this is, this has nothing to do. This is all an experiment in psychology that I'm running in a live portfolio. So every time people freak out on television, I, I'm buying stuff. So my print, I'm running this thesis through the end of the year and we're going to see how it works. But my go, but what I'm doing is, is in the morning, whatever they're freaking out about in the morning, that's what I go buy as soon as I get off the show. So, so, so far, I'm up about 40% in the portfolio. So it's working really well up to this point. So uh, we'll, we'll see. But, you know, this is just kind of one of those, uh, you know, kind of things that I like to play around with and, in, in, in and markets because it is all about psychology ultimately. And look, I don't own it. I've never owned it, but it wouldn't stop me just because I have these longer term views about what happens with it. It wouldn't stop me from trading. Right. Uh, I'm not a sports gambler, but I bet on the Kentucky Derby a few weeks ago. You know, so <laughs> which horse did the, you bet on? <laughs> what? Which horse did you bet on? <laughs> Midnight Bourbon didn't uh, do so well. Yeah, <laughs> you didn't. You didn't bet uh, on the horse that was cheating. See, there's the problem. <laughs> right. I should have known. Yeah. Um, so you know, the the point is, look, we're, we're buying and selling stuff all the time. And it's not always based on valuation. It's mm -hmm. based on other things. And, it, and it's fine to trade Bitcoin. It's fine to trade Ethereum, all of those. I'm not discouraging anyone. Uh, you know, I think the point is to just be careful because there's a lot more, both pros and cons, that I think a lot of people trading it don't understand. Right. This is just like GameStop. Right. Right. GameStop is somewhat easy to value. We know what that value is, and we know that that stock price was 10 times its value, maybe even more at some point. Right. Doesn't mean it can't go to 40 times, right? And it's it's fun to trade those stocks, but your losses, you know, if you're going to go and sit around and trade a, you know, a CVS or an IBM or a Microsoft, you know, maybe you can scalp a couple percent in a day if you're lucky lose a couple percent if you're not lucky these things if you go to lunch and you come back an hour <laughs> later you could be down or up five or ten percent well, so you just got to be careful yeah no and that's exactly right and look and and this is the um, you know this, and we talk about this on the show like in the morning when i do the the morning commentary you know we talk about our money flow indicator we talk about where we are in the markets um you know kind of what's happening and those are all very short-term signals these are signals that last three four weeks um and we talk you know we've been talking about We've been on a money flow sell signal now for the last month. It's very oversold. That's a four week signal, right? That's not an invest. You, you don't invest off that signal, right? You don't use that for investing long term. That's your fundamentals. Um, we use these signals, these technical signals, as a function to control risk in portfolios. So when we get these sell signals, we know that, hey, you know what, probably over the next month or so, we're either going to have a correction or we're going to have at least a pickup in market volatility. So, you know, things that had a big run up, big gain, in it, let's take a little profit off the table there. Let's shelter some of that gain that we get we got or, um, you know, hey, let's just reduce exposure for right now. We're, we've got too much exposure in portfolios. We've got too much exposure to risk. So we take some of that off, reduce that risk. And the same, same thing occurs um, over the last week. We've been slowly nibbling at buying the queues uh, because the, 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 the NASDAQ has gotten very oversold on the money flow basis. We're looking for a short term trade, three or four weeks that we may make some money or it just may outperform the S&P by not going down as much as the S&P. Right. Uh, so there's two catalysts and you say well if it's not going to go down as much as the sp why would you own it because we don't know which one it's going to be right we think that historically this signal is now as oversold as it was back in march of 2020 
every time this our signals have gotten this oversold, we've had at least a mild rally out of the markets. One, two, three, four percent. So there's some potential here to add some what we call alpha, which is excess performance, to the portfolio um, opportunistically. But that's the trading portion of our portfolios. That doesn't have anything to do with our fundamental holdings of our portfolio that we don't have any intention of selling long term. All we're going to do is trade, you know, trim profits and and add, you know, opportunistically to those positions and build them over time. So it's important to understand your th- and again, let's go back to our conversation. It's important to understand your thesis and understand your models, but also be open that things can change. And when they do change, you have to change with it. And it's also important, Lance, that you note that we have a level we would sell it at pretty quickly. Yeah. Right. So so we're not just saying, OK, we're going to buy it and we're just going to roll the dice and see what happens. We're like, here's what we expect. Here's what our models are telling us. This is what's happened the last 10 times the models have been at this level. You know, say seven or eight of those times, it's worked out really well. We know that even if it was 10 for 10, doesn't mean the 11th time will work out the way the prior 10 worked out. But we also know that at X and X a level, and that's X, you know, X level, that's based on a number of factors, all technical, mm-hmm. that we bail. Right. We sell what we bought. And we potentially even reduce exposure more. So it's important to understand a potential upside, understand what's happened in the past, but understand that, and this is where valuations matter. We're skating on thin ice, right? This isn't the thickest ice we've ever seen by (laughs) any stretch. So we have to be careful. And if we think the weather is going to warm up a little bit, we got to reduce some weight, reduce our exposure. If we think we're in for a cold snap, we can add a little bit of weight, add exposure. But but we still know that that we are on thin ice and that's what value that's the value of of valuations right. of and, fundamental analysis. Right. And, and this is just, you know, again, just, you know, you've got and as as you know, if you're managing your own money, the whole point here is that it's just a function of understanding you know, what you're doing and what I see too far off. What, what I see far too often. I'll spit that out this morning is investors buy stuff. And here's, I'm gonna give you a good example uh, of a stock in particular. I got an email on this yesterday. Um, They buy stuff under a premise and then they think that, well, that's just, you just hold it forever, right? And I got an email yesterday talking about, well, Lance, you're talking about potentially some more volatility in markets. So should I just buy dividend stocks and hold them? And that's fine, but the, still the management process of owning a dividend yielding stock is the same as it is anything else. And a good example of this is AT and T. Um, if you go back to where it was in February of 2020, the stock lost half its value, and so you go, "Great, I can buy the stock 50 percent cheaper, and I get a seven percent yield now, right?" And so the stock really, since March of 2020, has not gone much of anywhere. But you've been sitting here collecting a seven percent yield. Um, Yes, uh, day before yesterday, they cut their dividend by half. So now you've lost half your money and now you lost half your dividend. So what was your thesis for owning the stock, right? And, and this happens all the time, right? In March of 2020 and after, a lot of companies cut their dividends. So the point is, is that no matter what your thesis is, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy dividend yielding stocks and hold them and just collect the dividend, that's great. That's fantastic until you lose half your money and lose your dividend. Now, what are you gonna do? So every thesis has its point to where you have to change your model. All right. Here's another great one. Microsoft. Great company. They're going to dominate in in software. Everyone's going to have Outlook on their computer. Mm -hmm. Right. This is what people were saying in 99, 2000. It turned out to be true. They were right. Their (laughs) thesis was dead on. Right. (laughs) It fell in 2000, 2001. Mm -hmm. The stock the stock price didn't come back to where it was for another 15, 16 years, despite the fact that their earnings and revenue were growing at a great pace for those 15, 16 years. It was just a function of the stock got so far ahead of what it was worth that it took that long. And if you had that thesis that Microsoft was gonna rule the world, and you were right 20 years later, the problem was you could have been investing investing in CDs for those 15 years and been so far ahead of the game. Right. It, it, look, and, and, and as with everything, right? Timing is everything. Um, right. You know, Amazon's the same case, right? I, I, you, you see, you know, you always see these articles, and CNBC's terrible about this, by the way. They put these articles. If you had invested, you know, $1,000 into X when it went public, you would have made all this money. Very true statement. 
um, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, very much the case. But in the process of that, you spent a long period of time not making any money. A lot of those gains all happened really since 2010 and forward. Um, right. and, and so that's really kind of the issue. You know, timing is everything. And, and investing in the markets is all about timing. And, you know, if you invested in, in the markets in 1960, you didn't make money again until 1982. So, you know, you can spend very long periods in the markets not making any money. Invest, start investing in 2000, you didn't make any money till 2013. So very long periods in the markets where you can make no money. And, and now, unfortunately, we're now back to that level of the markets, fundamental-wise, um, valuation-wise, et cetera, where the forward expectations return over the next 10 to 20 years is going to be close to zero to two percent, and right. and and tie, in other words, the timing of entering the market today is really not in your favor. No, and look, there, we know there's going to be a one or two year period coming up. Could be start tomorrow. Could start five years from now. That if you can avoid that one or two year period, you will be so far ahead of the game, even if you are the most conservative of investors. That's right. But we don't know whether it's starting at ten o'clock today or ten o'clock in twenty twenty seven. That's but the all problem. we do know, it's apparently at 10 o'clock. So, <laughs> so at 10 o'clock every day, <laughs> check your monitor. <laughs> and other than that, you're good. Mike, thanks so much for your time today. All right, that wraps up the show for the day. Of course, we'll be back tomorrow. Uh, Danny Ratliff, Richard Rosso uh, tomorrow for Financial Fitness Fridays. And don't forget on Saturday, go by our website, realinvestmentadvice.com. Click on the Candied Coffee link, get registered. I'm going to be joining both Danny and Richard to talk about our mid-year market update, where we are, what we expect to go from here and kind of how we're do- and kind of how we're positioning for the last half of this year. That's this Saturday at 8 a.m. Join our our candy coffee right there at the website realinvestmentadvice.com and we'll see you tomorrow. Get daily investment news you can use. Delivered at the speed of the internet. Sign up for the Real Investment Report now at realinvestmentadvice.com. It's a rich man's world.